I received a phone call from housing benefit and she said I'd just like to inform you that your housing benefit is not going to be reinstated and you owe £76,000. Um, my name is Isabel Cunahan Sanchez. Um, I'm married to Anthony Cunahan. We have five children. Um, my husband's a bus driver. Um, his average weekly wage is around £400. If we go back to the start, we were living in um, Kilburn, South Kilburn. Anthony's father was dying. Um, he was very unwell for a number of years. So we made the joint decision to go back to Ireland and care for his father. When we returned to the UK in August 2008, we went to stay with my mum in South Kilburn again. So the council started to work with us to find somewhere. They made it abundantly clear that social housing wasn't an issue, um, wasn't an old, you know, a consideration. It just wasn't going to happen. With working with the council, it was in March 2009, they found us a four bedroom house in Kilburn, which was good because Anthony's obviously working back in Cricklewood bus garage, the children are in Kilburn schools, and we were told to apply for housing benefits. Obviously, the weekly rent was £690 a week. We can't afford to pay our rent. Who could? in the private sector. In 2010, when Anthony's father's land went into his name, um, we went to the London Irish Centre just to say, you know, we've inherited this land um, with the London Irish Centre. They wrote a letter to Housing Benefits say this couple are renting the land uh, to a farmer for €1,200 Euros a year and it worked out at £18 a week income so we declared that. Within three weeks of declaring the land, our weekly rent in our private accommodation, the share we paid, which is different to the Housing Benefits payment, we were paying £144 a week rent and that went up to £229 a week. I contacted in December Housing Benefit and they said that you're actually due for a benefit review. They're filling out the council tax form, tick, 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 and she said, oh, you've ticked, you have land, is that correct? And he said, yeah, we've told you we have land. And she said, we have no record that you have land. And he explained to her well, look, our rent went up here and there, and she said, look, we'll get back to you. And I received a phone call at 8.55 um, from Housing Benefit, and she said, I'd just like to inform you that your Housing Benefit is not going to be reinstated, and you owe £76,000 to Housing Benefit back pay because you were never entitled to benefit. And April the 27th, we were evicted from the private accommodation. The company who, who um, work for Brent to find the emergency housing, they rang us and they said, we've been contacted by Brent Council, they want you out tomorrow, we have to come and change the locks. For secure tenants or people who have a council house, they, that, that's governed under what they call the protection protocol for housing, a housing possession claim based on rent arrears. All that means is that the council must actively engage the tenant, they must write to them, invite them in for interviews, give assistance with housing benefit, basically take steps to keep the matter out of court. The tenant should also be doing the same, advising the council when they can pay, how they can pay, and making sure that it's at all time unreasonable for the, tenant, the council to evict them. If they provide the necessary information, hopefully some kind of agreement can be reached and eviction can be avoided. 
Unfortunately for non-secure tenancies, that pre-action protocol doesn't exist. But all councils should have some kind of policy in place to deal with how they to, um, go, go about taking possession of premises. If those steps have been done and the decision is taken to launch proceedings, what will happen is the council would serve what they call a notice to quit. That effectively ends a non-secure tenancy. So somebody in temporary accommodation will, will then their tenancy would then becomes to an end and the council is able to launch proceedings. In emergency housing they could ring me in one minute and say you have to be out tomorrow. For a non-secure tenancy, the, 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 the only defences are based in public law, which is human rights. For a secure tenancy, there are a few more options. And once that, once those possession proceedings have been launched, there used to be a hearing, a possession claim hearing, and where the tenant will come to the court, the council will put their case, and the tenant has an opportunity to put theirs. If the council are successful, in which most cases they would be, as there's no security for a temporary accommodation, they would, they would receive what they call a possession order. Unfortunately, once they have that possession order, the council can apply for an eviction. Once they apply for that eviction, they'll give notice to a bailiff. The bailiff will come to the property and that tenant will be evicted. If they refuse to leave, the, the police can be called. At Mahatma Gandhi House with um, Leslie Ryan from the London Irish Centre, they basically found us emergency accommodation, which we are currently in. It's just, I had a really hard time now, I'm kneeling. I have to wake up at 6.30 every morning to get to school in Brent. Because of the size of the rooms, me and Orla have our beds in the sitting room. So because we sleep downstairs and the family's downstairs for the majority of the day, it's really hard to concentrate on things in terms of um, homework and studying. From the 27th of April, we're incurring £270 a week arrears and they're meant to put you, wherever they put you, is meant to be affordable. Frankly, if we had a living wage, a minimum wage that was a higher level than it currently is, and if employers had to pay people that living wage, then there would be less subsidy by the taxpayer. At the moment, we're subsidising employers. We're also, of course, subsidising private landlords because every high housing benefit bill is because there is a high level of rent being charged by a private landlord, and housing benefit goes into the pockets of landlords not the tenant, it simply passes through the tenant, it ends up with the land, in, in the landlord's um, pocket. Some very serious changes are being piloted in April, but the big one that is coming in across the whole of the country, England, Wales and Scotland, um, is this bedroom tax, where council tenants will suddenly find that they're told that they're under occupying. <laughs> These changes hit people who are on housing benefit. So they don't hit somebody who is working and earning enough to pay their rent and don't, don't need housing benefit. Of course, an awful lot of people who are on housing benefit are working and their wages aren't high enough for, um, to, to meet the level that the government thinks is the minimum that they should be um, receiving and that's why they're getting housing benefit or they might be getting workers families tax credit, child tax credit, the other different sorts of tax credit that subsidise wages. We weren't sleeping, our benefit was just cut straight away which is the most distressing thing when you are relying on benefits and you have no say, uh, you know, when you're working, you know your wages are going to come to you, but when the governments are giving you any form of benefits and they just have the power to stop any benefit you receive, the fear and the worry 
I can't even describe. The reality is that an awful lot of people, even with the best advice in the world, are going to end up in rent arrears and they're going to end up with the risk of eviction. And I think that's where politics come in, comes in. I think that it's imperative that anybody who believes in social justice thinks that these benefit cuts are wrong is standing shoulder to shoulder with the people who are also suffering those benefit cuts um, so that they're not left with their heads above the parapet on their own. We're all, we're all in a daze. We're trying to think of different things to do. Anthony approached a colleague at his work. Um, his colleague put him in touch with the Kilburn Unemployed Workers Group and they had contacts and links and we decided to hold a meeting so um, that's how different people came together and that's where the, the roots of the campaign began. The campaign has achieved, um, our housing benefit was reinstated on the 12th of November 2012. The relief of not having the debt building up, any form of debt building up, especially a great debt every week, you know, hundreds every week, that relief has gone with the housing benefit been reinstated. We need to be um, encouraging anybody who works for the council and is saying I'm not prepared to be involved in evicting people because of rent arrears. We need to be standing up for those people. We want trade unions to be supporting those workers. I think there needs to be some mass protests against benefit cuts in general, against um, councils taking action to evict their tenants who are in rent arrears because of the benefit cuts and where people are actually evicted. And we're here tonight to support the protest against the budget cuts in Brent. Brent are imposing £141 million worth of cuts over the next three years in Brent. And that's affecting working class people like the Cunahan family. What we're saying is that they should support local people. They should stand down and resign and stand on an anti-cuts uh, platform. The reason we're still fighting is um, we believe that the rents in London especially are criminal, which they are criminal. We're fighting for social housing, not just for ourselves, but to build social housing again. This is what we need. The campaign to me, um, it's not just about us. I know the banner, you know, the Cunahan Sanchez family housing campaign, it's just the name on the jar. Isabella is giving me a lot of support in this campaign that everything that we should fight for against Brent, we should fight for it. And he's doing everything collectively for, for me and my family. It's a campaign for everyone with a housing issue that wants to come out and fight. So it's really important that the community stands together and fight back. And the Kunan family have led a very brave fight against the cuts and really shown a good example. Then I would like to see the example of the poll tax 20 years ago, where there was mass resistance when bailiffs were coming round to people's homes and so forth. Cuts in Britain, no cuts at all. Kick this family out of Brent. No, you can't. Oh, the children have grown up here. They have built their roots here. You can't kick this family out of Brent. No, you can't. Glenda told the Coonans go to Wales. Go to Wales. Glenda told the Coonans go to Wales. Go to Wales. If you can't afford to live here, you've no right to be here. Glenda told the Coonans go to Wales.